Hey guys, today I wanted to sit down with you and go over kind of my top must-have all-natural beauty ingredients. So these are products that I like to have in the house all the time, and if I was to have to choose between my makeup and these products, I would definitely choose these products over the makeup because I feel like these actually make a real impact on your body and the health of your skin. So I'm gonna start with my absolute like number one must-have beauty ingredient, and that is definitely coconut oil. You don't wanna get the refined coconut oil because then it's missing some of the nutrients, the process, the refining process that they go through with oils, it removes some of the nourishing benefits that you would want to have. So you want to go for the virgin um, fresh press coconut oil if possible. So I like to use this one by Dr. Bronner's and it's awesome for just kind of an overall like all-purpose body moisturizer. So you can use it from head to toe, you can use it on your face, your nails, your cuticles as a moisturizer and treatments. You can use it as a hair mask, makeup remover, eyelash and enhancer and conditioner. That's something I discovered just another benefit of using coconut oil to remove your eye makeup is it actually helps to enhance your lashes. Like it will make them longer and fuller and thicker. It's just a really healthy way to nourish your skin. And then there is another kind of variation of coconut oil, which this is infused coconut oil. It's Manoi Tiki Tahiti. It's actually made in Tahiti. And you guys, if you've seen some of my DIYs, I use this all the time. So this I had to include in this video because it's definitely, um, even though I've already mentioned coconut oil, this one is something that I use in kind of a different way. Like if I want to apply coconut oil and I'm going to be wearing it kind of throughout the day, the scent of this is just so dreamy and it just like is so delicious with that vanilla in it. I like to just take a little bit of this and run it through your hair, like the ends of your hair, if it's a little bit dry or something and it just helps to add some extra moisture into it. So that's another option for using coconut oil. Okay, the next one is clay. I love doing clay masks and I feel like they made a huge difference in my oily skin from three years ago. I started doing this clay mask about once a month. This is the Moroccan red clay powder. There are different types of clay masks. You want to choose one that just works well with your skin. These are both by Now brand. There's different brands that make these, but this is the European clay powder. It's the green clay, but my favorite one is this red Moroccan clay. It's good for sensitive skin. Um, some of the other ones, uh, I think it's like the bentonite clay. There's also like Aztec secret clay that I have. Um, it's a little bit, like when it dries, it's a little bit more crackly and crispy and it's just a little, maybe not as good for sensitive skin. Whereas this one is pretty good um, for any skin type, including sensitive skin. But if you guys want to see any sort of, I guess, um, more in-depth videos on any of these products I mentioned, like recipes to go with them, just let me know and I can totally do that. If you have any issues with stretch marks or scars, or if you have just really dry, maybe cracked heels or dry elbows and knees, butters are an awesome way to kind of rehydrate and nourish your skin. So here are a couple of my favorites. I like to use the Shea Butter. This is also like kind of my giant tub of lip balm because I will slather this stuff on my lips day and night and it just makes your skin so soft. It's Shea Natural. It's 100% unrefined whipped Shea Butter. I like to use the whipped because it's just easier to use you can use regular shea butter. It's just going to be hard. It can be more like crumbly, but you can you can melt that a little bit and kind of soften it up and be able to use it still. But that's just why I go for this one. That's the whipped shea butter. But you can see in there it is fluffy and whipped and it's still very dense though. Very thick and dense stuff. But that's an awesome one to use if you have any kind of issues with scarring, like I said, stretch marks, anything like that, um, that can be really nourishing to help heal those, um, at, at least as much as they can be, right? Because sometimes we can't make our scars go away entirely, but if you can at least soften the appearance of them, it's really helpful. And cocoa butter or cacao butter is another excellent one for exactly the same reason. So whichever one you happen to have in your area or you can get a hold of, whether it's shea butter or cocoa butter, cacao butter, um, these are excellent for the same exact purposes. And with the cocoa butter, it smells like chocolate. It just smells so amazing. So if you're into that smell, then go for this. If you're not, then you might want to go for the shea butter. Although shea butter does have its own kind of earthy scent. So it just depends on your personal preference, but both are excellent. When it comes to a nighttime moisturizer, my absolute favorite is just using a very simple oil and that is argan oil. I don't really use the cream moisturizers anymore. In fact, I really try to steer clear of those. I do have one that's all natural, but I kind of don't even bother using it anymore because my absolute favorite is argan oil and that's what I use every single night. So I'll just take 
take a pump of this on the back of my hand. This is the one that's by Acure. It's infused with coconut oil, so it also smells really good too, because argan oil on its own, it's not too overpowering, but it does have kind of an earthy sort of scent, and I just really like the one with the coconut oil if I'm going to be sleeping with it, because, you know, I'm, I'm right next to Michael, and I don't have to worry about him being like, what is that oil? What is that smell that you are wearing tonight? Um, instead, this one he really likes a lot, so it just kind of, it's like a aromatherapy at the same time as kind of balancing out your skin, your skin tone, evening out your complexion, and it's just overall like my absolute favorite skin moisturizer for nighttime. And then when it comes to um, like kind of using carrier oils with essential oils, there's a couple that I don't have. I ran out of them. I already used them up and I haven't repurchased yet, but I'm going to. Wish I had them here to show you, but I can just tell you about them. They are frankincense and myrrh. So those are really excellent if you have kind of drier or more mature skin or you're worried about, you know, fine lines or whatever. Uh, frankincense and myrrh are just a couple of really excellent essential oils to use to help um, to kind of restore and replenish your skin and help kind of smooth over any fine lines that you might have. So you can use those um, in any sort of carrier oil, whatever favorite carrier oil you have. Now, if you have like acne prone skin, my absolute favorite, this was like a breakthrough for me when I discovered it a few years ago, because I had really bad cystic acne, and although that was caused by diet, you know, I was allergic to milk, um, you know, dairy products, and gluten, so I had to kind of cut those out of my diet. As soon as I cut those out, my skin cleared up and I have not had cystic acne since. So um, aside from that, if you do have like any little breakouts, that are caused by maybe that time of the month or whatever, or maybe you ate something, you know, that you shouldn't have, you know, or sugar or whatever. I notice if I eat sugar, I get really, really red. So I have to, I try to steer, steer clear from as much sugar products as possible. Um, but if you have any sort of redness, little breakouts, anything like that, you're trying to battle against this lavender and tea tree oil can do wonders. That sounded really weird. Sorry, I'm wearing my Invisalign and I'm struggling to speak sometimes with it. Anyway, so this is the Desert Essence Lavender and Tea Tree Oil, Essential Oil, and that is like a powerhouse duo for reducing redness, like, instantly. Like, I cannot even believe how well that works. And that's something I've used for the past three years, solid, and anytime I have any sort of little bit of redness, I use that. I'll mix, like, just like one or two drops is all it takes, just the tiniest amount of any essential oil that you use, and you add that into your carrier oil of choice. Just dab it on, just spot treat with that carrier oil, and essential oil combination. Now I have my favorite carrier oils in front of me here, but when it comes to choosing the right carrier oil, you wanna look for the one that's gonna be good for your skin. I actually have a blog post on as many different oils as I was familiar with, and I wanted to share that with you. So I'll put that blog post down below if you want to check out like um, skin types versus carrier oils and which ones you might want to look into if you're not familiar with them yourself. Uh, so I'll have that blog post down below. Um, but one of the basic ones that's really good for your skin and it's the closest oil that kind of resembles or I guess it has the the closest in common with your natural oil within your skin is jojoba oil. This is an excellent one for most skin types and you can just add this in any sort of DIY project or you know beauty recipe you're using. This is a really good one. It has kind of a light weight viscosity so it's not real heavy. It soaks into your skin pretty easily and you can use this as your carrier oil for any sort of essential oils that you're using. A couple of oils that I personally use all the time are rose hip oil. If I'm using, oops, that's the baobab oil. I picked up the wrong one. They look very similar. Okay, rose hip oil. Um, this one is high in vitamin A. It has pure vitamin A in it, and that is really good for restoring kind of like sun damaged skin or replenishing, um, you know, if your skin is mature or just naturally dry. Um, this is a really good one to use for your skin. My skin is not naturally dry, but I still use it anyways because of the properties that it helps to it helps to actually you know smooth out your skin tone and even out your complexion. So that's why I like to use this because I have a lot of old scarring, acne scarring, and this really helps a lot with that, with kind of uh, reducing the appearance of the scars uh, from my old cystic acne breakouts. And then baobab oil is a really lightweight oil that's excellent to just use basically anywhere on your body. I use this a lot on my hands as a moisturizer, and the baobab oil is also really good to use as an all-over face moisturizer too. So on occasion, I will switch out my uh, Moroccan argan oil, and I'll use this instead just to kind of switch things up because they do have different nutrients, different properties, and they're both very lightweight. So either one does really well. One of the very best all-natural ingredients that you can possibly use on your skin is 
aloe vera, just pure aloe vera. So if you're growing this in your yard, you can go out, take a cutting of it, and then just apply the gel directly to your skin. You can apply it all over your face and neck. So if you have hyperpigmentation, if you have sun damage, um, spots that you want to lighten up, scars that you want to lighten up or reduce the appearance of, stretch marks, if you just want to help firm up your skin or kind of help reduce the appearance of enlarged pores, aloe vera is an amazing mask to use. So if you have a spot in your yard or on your balcony or even in your house, you can grow aloe vera and it's an excellent beauty ingredient. All right, last but not least are spices. Spices can be really good at treating acne. This is a spice that you should definitely have in your beauty regimen, which is turmeric. Some people have mentioned that it, you know, they're afraid of it yellowing their skin or staining. Um, the thing is you don't want to use it too much. Like you, it, like if you're doing a DIY project, you're making a mask or something, you only need a little bit. You don't have to use very much of it at all. And you can just mix carrier oil with that and you know, your chickpea flour or some other type of flour. You could even use like coconut flour or something like that. And you can use that as a mask and it really works well as an acne healing mask and a brightening mask. So turmeric is awesome for brightening your skin. And then the other one that is excellent for kind of uh, spot treating any acne that you might have is cinnamon. And cinnamon, you might be like, oh my, I don't know if I can use that on my face. Well, it only takes a tiny pinch of cinnamon and you mix it with a little dab of honey and then just whip that together, just a tiny little bit of it and just spot treat. So don't put it all over your face, just a little bit right where you're, you know, having any issues, any breakouts or whatever. And it can really help dry that acne up. When you mix it with the honey, try to find raw honey. Raw local honey is best. And now the most important beauty secret or beauty ingredient that you can do for your body every single day is drinking enough water. This will help flush out toxins from your body. It'll help refresh you. And also it's something that you need, you know, not just physically as far as skin goes and the health of your skin, but also mentally, emotionally, it affects your whole body inside and out. So try to get in a habit of drinking enough water every single day. All right guys, so those are my basic all natural ingredients that I wanted to share with you and just kind of put it out there and let you know that these are some really awesome products to kind of help heal skin, um, you know, like scarring, uneven complexion, dry skin, uh, sun damage, things like that. These natural products can really make a difference for that. All right, I'm gonna let you go and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, bye.